The owners are meeting in Florida. They're meeting at the Breakers Hotel um, in Florida, in Palm Beach. And uh, lots of news coming out of that. The AFC coaches spoke at their breakfast press conferences. And basically the way this works is they just put 16 tables out and an NFL head coach sits down at the table and as many members of the media, local, national, whatever, sit down and and ask questions. It's just one big, huge um, uh, question palooza. <laughs> and tomorrow it'll be the NFC coaches. So I can't wait for, for that one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We'll see what Mike McCarthy has to say. I, and I knew that's where you're heading. <laughs> well, there's lots to discuss in the National Football Conference. And in the American Football Conference, it's the question of the free agent season, the quarterback carousel season. And it will be one of the biggest questions going into the regular season because it not only involves one of the more storied franchises with one of the more rabid fan bases, certainly waving towels, it also involves one of the more popular players in the NFL over the Last 10-plus seasons, certainly up in the Pacific Northwest, where he once upon a time had a Hall of Fame career trajectory before leveling off and then bottoming out a couple of times in Denver. And it also involves the quarterback that used to be on a team that has first overall picks in back-to-back -back seasons, one because they earned it one year with a little help of the Houston Texans and one because they made a smart trade to keep their young quarterback and then now have the first overall pick again because the team that drafted first overall had such a dreadful year last year. And Justin Fields now is on this team because the Bears decided to use the first overall pick this year. I'm talking about, obviously, the Pittsburgh Steelers and Russell Wilson and Justin Fields. It just involves so many storylines in the NFL. What are the Bears going to do with the first overall pick? Who are they going to choose with the first overall pick? And what are they going to do with Justin Fields if they actually use it? And then what's going to happen to Russell Wilson now that the Denver Broncos cut him and incurred the largest dead money cap hit in the history of the National Football League after Russell had so much going for him in Seattle. And when's he going to start playing like that again? Can he play like that again? All of that is now in the smelting pot of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And head coach Mike Tomlin, who, as last week I kept saying, was apparently, reportedly, making sure his quarterback his veteran quarterback understood what was happening with the young quarterbacks on the team and giving him assurances, reportedly, that normally would be given to a quarterback that had been with the team seven years, not seven days. So you bet Mike Tomlin had a ton of people around his table today at the owners' meeting when asked about whether Russell Wilson has the so-called pole position in a quarterback competition, or is there no competition at all? Is Justin Fields flat out the backup quarterback? What in the world is happening in Pittsburgh? Here's what Mike Tomlin had to say. Ideally, do you feel that in a situation where you like to have Justin kind of sit, learn this whole year, or is he is he in that competition? No, we're um we're not resistant to competition, but as I've mentioned several times of late, I just think it's appropriate to establish positioning as we get into this thing and. The term that I've used is Russell has pole position. And, and why do I use that term? Um, because during this time where we're not formally working, man, I just think it's beneficial. Um, his experience um, in the National Football League, um, his process that's been honed and perfected, talking about over a 12-month calendar, is not only good for him, it's good for teams. Uh, it's good for receivers, tight ends, running backs, et cetera. All the things that people are that are really committed to winning do this time of year. Um, Russell has those resources, man, that, that structure. And so that's why I say he has pole position, man. It just creates a synergy that I think is good for this time of year. When it's time to compete, we get in training camp-like settings and going to preseason stadiums and so forth. Obviously, Justin will be given an opportunity uh, to show his capabilities. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? De well, de <laughs> okay. Doesn't it? Yeah. Or it does not? Yeah. I mean, to me, 
that at this time of year where where, where no one's in the building and you're bringing on a new offensive coordinator and you're bringing in um, a new set of quarterbacks, you might as well go with a guy who knows how to do it. He's the vet. He's proven. More than a kid who's never. Still figuring it out. Well, I mean, hasn't done it more than just a couple of years. And um, also, as he said, doesn't have the resources. <laughs> I don't know if that means that Russ can afford to fly his quarter, his, his receivers all over the country. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know if that's I'm what sure, he meant. I'm sure that's not <laughs> what he meant. But I mean, yeah, maybe tongue, maybe tongue in cheek. I, I maybe, know. Maybe he meant it. I don't know. I mean, he could have the entire team have their own bathrooms if he flies that's them into true. Denver. That's not what he meant by resources. Maybe he also meant like, you know, Russ has all these coaches that he works with. No, I just, so listen, he's like, like listen, we're not competing right now. We're not out there on the field. We might as well just give some form of a structure here to everybody. And and so, as he said, that um, he totally intends to, once they get there, let's see, best man win. I mean, that makes sense I still in that respect. If it's not Russell Wilson week one. I don't know, man. I mean, Justin Fields, is, it's amazing how it went from he is worthy of being the quarterback of the future for the Chicago Bears, and the Bears fans love him, and he did finish strong, and he's 25, and he's still figuring it out, and it looks like pieces were falling into place, and things clicked, and he's worthy of that, and the rest of all of us figure out, hey, it's possible that he gets traded to Atlanta and Atlanta's got the eighth overall pick. And then he winds up for a sixth round selection that could be a fourth round selection in next year's draft. And all of a sudden now he's hot garbage and he's definitely a backup quarterback. And Russell Wilson, who did have improved numbers last year, but still we're, we're, we're looking for the Russ cooking. I, I Similar also to think- the Seattle days. Like you think a 25 year old who, you know, when the play breaks down, can rip it off for 50 yards, is not going to potentially have a figurative, a figurative leg up by the time, or a literal leg up, yeah. you know, by the time it all goes down, or he's just going to, Russ is just going to have the neck up stuff down better than Justin Fields, and that will translate into the same version of what we just heard from Mike Tomlin, right? I, I think the Fields finish strong is... We're letting our eyes kind of lie to us. Look at the numbers. I mean, he had five touchdowns, three picks, 82 passer rating, under 200 yards passing per game. He was sacked three times a game. Didn't play that great. I think just better than what he had played previously before he got injured. Or the same, the same, I guess, um, theory that Mike Tomlin just passing game. The same year. theory that Mike Tomlin put up past out there, like, hey, this guy's got 10 years of experience, 10 years of knowing how to prepare 10 years of knowing how to get his team prepared that this time of year, it makes sense to give him pole position. Then the same thing will apply when it's time to actually start the season. And then it's much easier to go with him first and go to Justin Fields. If he struggles rather than the other way around, I'm kind of coming around to what you're saying, Chris, and you've been saying it too, TJ. Meanwhile, what happened with Kenny Pickett? That was asked of Mike Tomlin as well. I can only assume the answer. I cannot wait to hear the answer. Hit it. In in the days following our acquisition of Russell, um, Kenny expressed a desire for a change of scenery. Um, As I had mentioned, we had been in pretty fluid communication with with Chicago after we got a sense of what direction that was going. Then the dominoes started to fall, and we did the transactions necessary to kind of Send, Phil, um, send Kenny to Philly and, and acquire, acquire Justin. We're excited about the guys that we have um, and Russell and Justin, man, and just really can't wait to get started. Wanted to change the scenery. I thought he was going to go the hostages and volunteers thing again. But it's just I guess it goes line. without saying. Such a great line. I got to say it again. I mean, this is the team. I, I, I Nobody asked him about hard knocks. I would have. I'm telling you, this is the team. This is the team. I, I understand when the Bears get Caleb Williams, that's going to be a hot team, and they're going to get Caleb Williams. They're going to draft him, by the way. Jaden Daniels' pro day is tomorrow, and then it's Drake Mays after that. It doesn't matter. They could literally levitate, and it's still the Bears going to choose Caleb Williams. So 
I believe. They and would have to uh, volunteer for hard knocks. And by they're, the way, they're not eligible. Uh, by the way, I'm aware of that. Yeah, I'm aware of that. No, I know they're not eligible to be forced. I guess I mean the Jets were forced into it, but they no. Were and also everybody's eligible. been forced into it. Nobody's volunteered for hard knocks anymore. I know, but there are uh, criteria now. And I understand what the criteria are. Yeah. And nobody's going to be volunteer for hard knocks ever again. It's just going to have to be some sort of uh, application from the league office and maybe NFL Films saying, "Come on." What do you say? Yeah. Do us a solid. And I don't know if they're going to do that. But that said, the Bears are going to have some heat on them. Ryan Poles is on tomorrow's show as well. We're going to chat with the general manager of the Bears tomorrow. Can't wait to chat with him. Uh, who else is going to have some heat? The Chargers will have some heat thanks to Jim Harbaugh. Some other heat might be Washington, maybe, depending on them drafting Jaden Daniels. And then obviously Dan Quinn and so much has changed right there. The Chiefs will always have some heat on them. Jets when Aaron Rodgers doesn't run for vice president. <laughs> it you gets know, announced tomorrow. Apparently. <laughs> so, you know, all of, all of that. But nobody's going to have the heat on them quite like the Pittsburgh Steelers. With the fan base and the decisions they've made that are so out of character or off-brand. And then we'll see who they draft, too. Right now, they're offensive pieces together. And you add up, because Russ is... Playing for the league minimum for them, 14 million bucks. The high man on the totem pole is Najee Harris with $3 million. It's kind of crazy what they're building. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 